opening. What if the fall of Camelot was actually a revenge plot? Picture this, a realm of tranquility and magic, presided over by Nimue, the Lady of the Lake, and her lover, come Vizier Merlin in his youthful prime. This is Avalon, a world where peace is the norm and danger a distant echo. But even in this idyllic kingdom, shadows can stir. Enter Victoria, a local heroine known far and wide for her superhuman strength. When a beast is reported to be lurking in the realm, Victoria is dispatched to take care of it. Advised by Merlin, Nimue sends Victoria on this mission, unaware of the cataclysmic chain of events that are about to unfold. Victoria returns victorious, but her success is steeped in tragedy. The beast she has slain was not a random monster. It was Grendel, Nimue's son. The shockwaves of this revelation ripple through Avalon, shaking the very foundations of Nimue and Merlin's relationship. But the plot thickens. Nimue's maid overhears her mistress plotting to kill Victoria. And so Victoria seeks out Merlin, hoping to obtain a potion to protect herself from Nimue's magic. Merlin gives her a potion, but instead of granting her immunity, it weakens her. In a shocking twist, Merlin betrays Victoria, revealing his part in the tragic fate of Grendel. When Victoria and Nimue face off, the truth comes tumbling out. Grendel was not just Nimue's son, but Merlin's as well. With this revelation, Nimue kills Victoria, her heart filled with sorrow and rage. But when she goes to confront Merlin, she finds he has fled Avalon, escaping to the land of Logre. Closing, thus the stage is set for Nimue's revenge plot as Merlin leaves Avalon for Logre. The seeds of a grand scheme have been sown, and the revenge plot that will lead to the fall of Camelot has begun. Stay tuned as we delve deeper into the twisted tale of Return to Logres. Now, we turn our attention to Logres where Merlin guides young Arthur. Following a brief prologue, we're thrust into the thick of things in season two, aptly titled Arthur. Arthur, under Merlin's counsel, is seen attempting to unite a divided Logres, splintered into independent kingdoms since the death of Uther 20 years prior. The turmoil has attracted the likes of Lancelot of the Lake, seeking a chance to prove himself in battle. Merlin's inquiries about Lancelot's origins are interrupted by the arrival of Guinevere, whose allegiance Arthur seeks to secure through marriage. An alliance with Guinevere's father would strengthen Arthur's position and their meeting seems to be a promising start. However, a wounded squire brings disturbing news of the Black Knight, forcing Arthur and Merlin to ride north. In a devastating encounter, Arthur is defeated and his sword, the symbol of his right to rule, is shattered. Lancelot steps in to save Arthur, separating him from Merlin in the process. The wounded Arthur is taken to a castle by the lake, the home of Lancelot's former mistress, Madame Le Fay. As Arthur recovers, he and Madame Le Fay find themselves drawn to each other, leading to an affair. Eventually, Lancelot reunites with Merlin, who reveals the shocking truth. Madame Le Fay is Arthur's older half-sister. A horrified Arthur seeks to regain his honor by defeating the Black Knight. Merlin guides him to the lake where Nimue, the Lady of the Lake, bestows upon Arthur the legendary sword Excalibur and its scabbard. Emboldened, Arthur confronts and defeats the Black Knight, who discloses another chilling revelation. Arthur's brother-in-law, Lot, has rallied Arthur's enemies and is leading an assault on Camelot. Arthur Lancelot, Merlin and the Black Knight, whose true identity is revealed as Pellinore, ride to Camelot. They join Arthur's army, led by his seneschal and foster brother Kay, and successfully quell Lot's forces, taking his sons as hostages. Victorious, they return to Camelot where Arthur marries Guinevere. With Excalibur in hand and Guinevere by his side, Arthur seems ready to lead, but trouble is brewing. In a kingdom fraught with tension, love and betrayal take center stage. Season 3, aptly titled Adultery, spins a web of passion and treachery that seizes the heart of Camelot. The classic tale of Guinevere and Lancelot's doomed love unfolds amidst the turmoil of a kingdom on the brink. Their clandestine affair, a dangerous dance of desire and deceit, threatens not just their own lives, but the very fabric of Camelot itself. This is not just a tale of star-crossed lovers, but a story that shakes the foundations of trust, honor, and loyalty. In parallel, Merlin, the wise vizier, takes under his wing Vivian, a fae who has left the mystical realm of Avalon to learn magic from him. Her journey of discovery, however, is tainted by the tragic undercurrent of Merlin's past. The shadow of his betrayal of Victoria looms large, turning the learning into a path of thorns. Each lesson becomes a painful reminder of his own failings. 
But the intrigue doesn't stop there. Morgana Le Fay, Arthur's half-sister, weaves her own thread of manipulation. Her machinations are as subtle as they are deadly. Her intentions shrouded in ambiguity. Is she a friend or foe? A saviour or saboteur? Her actions perplex and bewilder, adding another layer of complexity to the already intricate tapestry of Camelot's court. The season spirals into a crescendo of treachery and heartbreak, leaving no character untouched by its effects. Each secret rendezvous, each whispered spell, each veiled threat adds to the growing sense of unease. The kingdom, once a beacon of unity and strength, now teeters on the edge of chaos. As the kingdom grapples with adultery and deceit, a greater threat looms. Unseen and unexpected, it waits in the shadows, ready to strike at the heart of Camelot. A storm is brewing, and in its wake nothing will ever be the same. The stage is set for the climax of this tale. Season 4, aptly titled Atonement, plunges us into the final chapter of this animated saga. The Grail Quest, a divine mission undertaken by Arthur's knights, takes centre stage. This holy endeavour, however, is not simply a quest for a sacred relic, but a journey of self-discovery and redemption for the knights, and indeed, for Camelot itself. Mordred, Arthur's illegitimate son, rises to prominence during this time. His ascendance is a potent mix of ambition, resentment and a thirst for power. Mordred's rise is not merely a subplot, but a pivotal turning point that sets the stage for the inevitable downfall of Camelot. His clash with Arthur echoes the timeless struggle of fathers and sons and the devastating consequences of their conflict. The Battle of Camlan, the final and most devastating conflict in Arthur's reign, marks the climax of this tale. Here, the tragic inevitability of Arthur's fate is realised. The battle is a cataclysmic event that tears apart the realm, leaving behind a wake of destruction and sorrow. It's not just a clash of swords, but a clash of ideals, loyalties and destinies. Arthur's death, a moment that has been foreshadowed since the beginning of the saga, is not just the end of a king, but the end of an era. His journey to Avalon, guided by a repentant Morgana, is steeped in myth and symbolism. As Arthur sails towards the Misty Isle, we see not just the fall of a great king, but the end of a dream, the dream of a united Logris. Morgana's repentance and her role in guiding Arthur to Avalon signifies her transformation. Once a manipulator and antagonist, Morgana becomes a guide, leading Arthur towards his final resting place. Her change of heart is a poignant reminder of the complexity of these characters and the blurred lines between good and evil. In the end, Arthur's fall is not a mere loss, but a complex web of revenge, love and betrayal. So what does all this mean for our understanding of Return to Logris? Return to Logris is a layered tapestry, woven with threads of revenge, love, treachery and redemption. It begins with the seeds of revenge sown by Nimue and Merlin who plot to destroy their own creation, Camelot, as a reprisal for the slaying of their son, Grendel. This revenge plot sets the stage for all the ensuing conflicts and betrayals that shape the narrative. As we journey through the rise of Arthur, we see how the seeds of revenge germinate, subtly influencing his actions and decisions. His quest to unite Logris, his alliances and battles, even his love affairs, all play into this grand scheme of retribution. Arthur's story is not just about his rise to power, but also about how he becomes an unwitting pawn in a game of revenge. The themes of love and betrayal, beautifully encapsulated in the tragic love triangle of Guinevere, Lancelot and Arthur, add another dimension to the narrative. These personal conflicts and passions further entangle the characters in the web of revenge, escalating the stakes and hastening the fall of Camelot. The fall of Camelot, marked by the Battle of Camelon and Arthur's death, is the culmination of this revenge plot. But it's not just a tale of a kingdom's downfall, it's a testament to the power of revenge to shape destinies, destroy relationships and bring down empires. It's a stark reminder of the destructive potential of unchecked vengeance. But Return to Logris does not end in destruction. It offers a glimmer of hope, a chance for redemption. Arthur's journey to Avalon, guided by a repentant Morgana, signifies the possibility of atonement and renewal, even in the face of devastating loss. In the end, Return to Logres is not just a story of a fallen kingdom, but a tale of revenge, love and redemption that continues to captivate us. It invites us to delve deeper, to look beyond the surface, and to find the intricate patterns and profound meanings woven into its narrative fabric.